Look how close we were to cashing this ticket. Unbelievable. We found the edge and you could not expose it. Jefferson. Guys, welcome to a special edition of Gridiron Insights. We are in Florida on vacation on site, but we do not stop. We never stop. Shout out to the 770 subscribers on the YouTube channel. Hit that link now. Comment, like, subscribe. We almost hit a banger out of the park for Thursday Night Football. We were at Jefferson. I don't know. He had to lean. He had to lean his hand over. Anyhow, we can't get upset. We took a loss during week one NFL. The damn Seahawks. The damn Vikings. But anyhow, we're going to bounce back. We know we're going to bounce back. Thursday night was just a little taste of the bounce back. We are this close to having perfect data. Two more weeks of games, and we are going to be hitting 100%. Look, we can't hide from our selections. We are still up 277% on the year. Look, the Lions hit it. They won outright. The Browns won outright. The Commanders won outright. The Jaguars covered four and a half. Pollard scored two touchdowns. What the hell happened with Minnesota? Kirk Cousins, what'd you do? With all these th what, three or four turnovers? We have to do better, Kirk. And you saw what was going on in Thursday Night Football. There was like three turnovers by the time we finished the third quarter. You cannot win games like that in this league. Let's talk about now Geno Smith. Did you all see Geno Smith out there? Is this guy serious? On third down, Smith, pressure comes late and it's incomplete. That pressure coming from Aaron Donald. All right, guys, so this is a much faster video than we usually do. I usually break down the math behind these numbers and provide the insights. I do not have that this week because we are on vacation on site. But what we do have is, of course, trusting me with the analysis. You know how close we came to that Thursday night game, and it was all due to this analysis. So what does that mean for week two NFL picks? We are exposing the player props. Think about this. A game only ends one time. So if you pick the Cowboys to win, you're only going to find out at the end. One opportunity to find out, one opportunity to win. But when it comes to player props, Christian McCaffrey, Austin Eckler, Tyler Algier, these names up here, they have multiple opportunities to score. An elite running back has an average of five to eight opportunities to score. That is a lot more than just one game outcome. Also, the weakness in the player props are mighty good. McCaffrey, week two, is minus 140, minus 140 to score at any time. A lot of other players, you can find, let's say, a Tyler Algier. He'll be plus 110. That's plus money for a guy that scored two touchdowns last week and a run-heavy offense. The books are scared of the player props. That's why they're not available on a lot of games. We need to take advantage of that in week two. So no matter what, we're going to follow what the data tells us to do. We will die on the daddy data sword. What is the daddy data telling us to do this week? First off, McCaffrey, anytime touchdown, 49ers money line. We are going to take the best team in football against what should be one of the worst teams in football. Now, where Matthew Stafford caught us off guard, we didn't have the data on him. We had no data on him. But what did we know? Guy is a 15-year veteran, 15 Pro Bowls, 15 cannons of an arm. There's nothing we could have done there. We should have known better. But we went with the data, which was kind of little, you know, the data from 2022 going into 23. Didn't account for a lot of things, like a healthy Stafford. But we have refined data this week since we have now a week of games. And what else are we learning? That the Jaguars have an elite quarterback. They are facing the Chiefs. It is in Jacksonville. Give me Trevor Lawrence over one and a half touchdowns. Also, give me ATN to score on the Chiefs. I am looking for a high-scoring affair in this one. Chris Jones is back, but that doesn't matter. Trevor Lawrence is the truth. You are looking at a 
potential MVP candidate. On top of that, give me the Lions. The Lions at home, on speed, St. Brown, Gibbs, that crew, Laporta, they will handle the Seahawks. Everyone will be handling the Seahawks. They are down two tackles. The right tackle is going to have a nightmare with Hutch. A nightmare. I am a huge Raiders fan, but in this one, I have to go Buffalo Bills money line. The Raiders are walking into a buzzsaw in Buffalo. The Bills, they concentrated on two players too many times. Allen and Diggs. The data shows it. It was lopsided. They will find a balanced attack. They need to get the wide receiver to Davis. They need to get the tight end in action in this game. I believe they do. The data says they will. And what's the final thing the data is telling me to do? Dallas Cowboys at home against the Jets. Jets are in a little bit of a spiral this week. Believe me, they're not going to have the oomph that they had against uh, the Bills in week one. I like the Cowboys defense. I like the Cowboys defense to confuse Wilson. And I think it's going to be an easy win in the end for the Cowboys. I'm not liking the spread of nine and a half or ten. That's too much. But give me the Cowboys money line. We are wagering 200 on this to win a potential $3,373.56. The lucky number there being 56 LT and the old 56 on this chest. The data will not treat us wrong this week. We got very close on Thursday night football. 76% of the bets were on the Eagles and 76% of the money as well. That was the square play. The data told us Kirk Cousins throws the hell out of that ball, and he did. He threw for 350 plus. We also knew he was going to score more than one and a half touchdowns. We had the entire game on lock. We even knew that Jefferson was a hand away from scoring. But anyway, these are the picks for week two. We will have a continued recap, normal style, once we get back to the crib.